Hello everyone, this is David Godibadze from IT Solutions Network, and today I'm going to show you how to build VPN between Unify devices using SiteMagic. I have here Unify Cloud Gateway Ultra, and then I have on a remote location Unify Express. I'm going to set up these devices from scratch. These devices have Unify controller, so I'm gonna say that the Unify console's name is going to be UCG Ultra, that's the default name, and I'm gonna click Next here. Now it's asking to create or sign in into the Unify account. So I'm going to put my credentials here. Now it's asking me if I want to restore my previous backup because this device was used already with this account. I don't want to restore any of the backup. So I'm going to click continue without backup here and it will start working. Let's switch to the remote location here. And I have the same situation here, but with Unify Express. So I'm going to click next, sign in. I'll put the same credentials and of course it will ask me if I want to restore the backup, which I don't, and click continue without the backup. Now this is asking me to name the Wi-Fi SSID name and Ultra is not. Now the reason for that is that Ultra doesn't have integrated Wi-Fi, while Unify Express has it. So let's name it YouTube Lab Network and put some password in it and finish. Now, before the Unify Express is setting up the Unify OS that includes the Unify controller in it, let's switch to the main office, the Ultra, and click Next for the speed testing. And now this is starting to configure the Unify OS as well. Ultra has configured the Unify OS already. It looks like we have the update for the Unify controller. Let's click Update and let's switch to the remote location and let's see what's going on here. Go to dashboard here as well. And hopefully this one has the update as well so we can be on the same version for both devices. Okay, now we are in the dashboard, actually dashboard, but not the dashboard of the Unify control, but dashboard of the Unify OS. And we want to update the Unify control on this as well. Now, while it's updating, or at least queued to update, let's go to the main office and see if it was updated. Okay, it looks like it was updated, and now it's starting the Unify controller. While it's starting the Unify controller, let's see what's going on on the console settings and see what do we have here. We have auto backup weekly. We can backup it right now if we want to. We have time zone, we have night mode, which probably will change the screen for these hours. We have LED, we can turn on, LED turn off. We have direct remote connection. Now, this is to access the router directly without the Unify cloud service. And I think it's even to access it from the outside. Yeah, it's to access the Unify controller from the outside, not just from the inside, but from the outside, from the internet. You don't want to enable that. And then we have SSH. If you enable SSH, you will be able to SSH to the Unify OSS itself. Now on the left side up, we have the Unify controller icon. I'm gonna click that, and this will load the Unify controller itself. Now here you see my public IP, my internal IP, my system uptime. I enabled this device about two days ago, and my carrier. This is the optimum online. On the network settings, as you can see, we have default subnet and the same subnet is going to be on the Unify Express. Because of that, we want to change the subnet on one of these routers. That's gonna be default subnet. I'm going to name it users, for example, and then I'm going to change it to zero. Notice that IP address, first IP address, broadcast, and the range of DHCP all has changed because I changed the third octet from one to zero. That means once I click the apply, everything that needs to be changed when you change the subnet IP on the interface will be changed automatically. Hit apply changes. And now what's going to happen is that my computer, which already has the IP address from this subnet, will have to renew IP address and get the new IP address from new subnet, let's first confirm we still have the old IP. Okay, we still have it. Now let's renew that. This command will tell DHCP client on the Windows computer to try and get the new IP from the DHCP server. And DHCP server is on the Unify control itself. It's a service, right? Let's click enter and wait. You see it's zero. Now if I go into remote location, 
it's still starting up. You see how Unify Express is slow compared to Unify Ultra? So if speed of configuring is your thing and you want to configure things quickly to ship these devices to your clients, Express is not the way to go. But Express has the Wi-Fi integrated in it. So for this small office or even a home, it should be enough. I'm not saying that it should be enough for five, six room house, but uh, for small apartment with three or four bedroom, should be enough. Let's go to the main office. And on the left side, we have topologies. By the way, we don't have the site VPN option here because we are directly connected to the Ultra. We have to connect through the unifyue.com. Actually, you can do the VPN from one location. You have to sign into unifyui.com and you don't have to go through main site or the remote location. You just need the internet, okay? And now here, you see I have uh, site magic. If I go into site magic, we can click, click here, get started and we can name it whatever we want vpn for youtube for example and i'm going to select between which devices i want to build the vpn since i have only two devices not three or four to build the full mesh it's gonna build the vpn only between these two devices and keep in mind that if you want to use site magic you have to have all these unified devices into one account you cannot build side VPN between different accounts. So let's select these two devices and I'm going to click add here. And now I will see all the subnets I have on all my devices. So first of all, this is the subnet from Ultra and this is the subnet from Express. Now keep in mind, if I have multiple subnets, I will see all the subnets here and I can choose between which subnets I want to build the VPN. So I'm going to click connect. And that's it. Now let's confirm it works. This is the side with zero subnet, right? So if I ping subnet with one, 192.168.1.1, .1, that means I'm pinging the Unify Express from main office, from the office where we have Unify Ultra. Let's see if it's pingable. It's not pingable yet. You know, I don't know if the access rule is blocking the ICMP on the Unify Express. Let's get the IP address of the actual computer, which is 1.23. I remember I allowed the ICMP in the firewall, firewall rules of the Windows. So if this IP is reachable, this remote IP, remote office computer's IP is reachable from the main office, I should be able to ping that. Let's go to the main office and try to ping dot 23 and of course it's pingable because vpn is there because vpn is working let's turn off the vpn and uh, see if the ping goes down okay this is in the main office i'll go into site vpn site magic and i'm going to deselect and click connect actually i cannot click connect let me see if i can delete here i'm going to delete it from here it is still pingable, but as soon as the configuration changes, you will lose the ping because there is no VPN between main office and remote office anymore. Now let's add multiple subnets in it. Let's go into Unify uh, Ultra and add new subnet. That's going to be IoT devices. And for that, I'm going to use five, for example. Click Add. And now let's go into Site Magic and let's see how many subnets we will have when I add these two devices. Add, and now you can see that I have two subnets on the Ultra side and one subnet on the Unify Express. I can click, I can check both and build the VPN between all three subnets. But that's not enough. I'm going to show you what else you can do with this Site Magic. Let's say you are on the uh, WireGuard configuration. You are building the WireGuard VPN, remote user VPN. So that's going to be remote users. And now let's add the client, add, proceed, apply changes. Now the WireGuard VPN is configured for the WireGuard remote VPN users. This is the subnet. 
and not subnet, the IP address of the client one, but the subnet is this guy, 192.168.10.0 slash 24. You see 24 here? Now, here's the cool thing. If you go into site magic, you will see this subnet as well. Here's the thing. You can have VPN between main office remote VPN users and remote location. So remote users dial in through the Wireguard VPN to the main office can use the same VPN to reach out a remote location. Isn't that awesome? So I can just check all of them and Unify Express and click connect. And that's it. VPN is built between all these things. And the same applies to the remote location. If you add some kind of new network here, that network will be an option in the site magic. This is pretty much how you build the site magic VPN between unified devices. This is all for today. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments.